Let me know, Rachel, when you're ready. Okay. It's like Dallas is about to come on. All right, I'm ready. All right. Um, this is the February 3rd, 2022 Environmental Advisory Commission meeting. Start with a roll call. Robert Shaw. Present. Ann Maxwell. David Ames. Present. Thomas Trevathan. Present. Jeff McKinnon. Present. And Dallas Clark. Present. Carol, can we have a Pledge of Allegiance? All right. Um, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic which stands. One nation, nation under God, indivisible, indivisible. liberty, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> you any, um, additions or deletions um, to the agenda? The only um, kind of minor addition under old business, there's several things that I'm going to follow up on from the January meeting. Um, just include in my Duke Environment Project um, report. We have a motion that we approve the agenda. I'll support that. Second. Second. Okay. We'll take a vote on this, Rachel. Robert Shaw. Aye. David Ames. Aye. Thomas Trevathan. Aye. Jeff McKinnon. Aye. And Dallas Clark. Aye. The agenda is approved. Um, do I have a motion uh, that we approve the January 6th minutes? So moved. I second that. Take a vote. Robert Shaw. Aye. David Ames. Aye. Thomas Trevathan. Aye. Jeff McKinnon. Aye. And Dallas Clark. Uh -huh. The uh, minutes are approved. Are there any announcements? If none, um, next is time for a public comment period. Uh, this is reserved for comments by the public. And um, each individual is allowed three minutes to speak. Daryl, are there any um, uh, requests for public comment? Uh, no. All right. Next agenda item is old business. Um, and I'll start the update on the Duke School of Environment. Um, we haven't had a Zoom meeting in January. Um, the students uh, are presumably frantic about collecting data um, from the city managers. Um, they would like to have their data all collected by roughly now. And over the next two or three weeks, they're going to put that data together. Um, hopefully by the end of February, they'll, they'll have some preliminary uh, data. And um, 
then they'll proceed with um, more interpretation of the data and making some recommendations. So um, other than their data collection right now, I don't have anything else to um, report. Um, Jeff, refresh me. You sent me an email about um, contacting them about something, I forget. Well, um, when I met with them, they had asked me about um, um, you know, environmental issues outside of the city's direct purview in the community broadly, and uh, whether we had any, anything that should be brought to their attention. And so uh, I let them know about um, the GUC policies on mainly on um, solar panels and their, their pricing policies, which um, don't encourage and probably discourage the use of solar in Greenville, which is obviously bad, you know, unfortunate environmentally and also discourages business locally. Um, so uh, there's, you know, we, we discussed that, but <clears throat> uh, I've, I since uh, have been looking more at those web pages and uh, on natural gas in particular. And uh, I've confirmed um, some points that, that I learned about when I got uh, advertising on my Facebook feed from GUC. So they seem to be advertising. I couldn't find anything on in their budget that I downloaded on advertising. So I don't know where that comes out of. But their advertising is promoting the use of um, natural gas, for example, in pits in your yard instead of using um, you know, firewood. Or, or so I have no for, understanding what this grid represents. Also for barbecuing and, and you know, various things. And, the, and then uh, the, uh, the webpage also talks about this. And they, describe, and they make a statement that if you're using natural gas, you don't have to worry about your carbon footprint which of course is quite incorrect. Um, and the, uh, the perspective in amongst people in the environmental community who think about energy very much increasingly is that natural gas, you know, was, was useful for a while. It's better than coal, but that we don't want to be promoting its use at this point. Um, and in fact, with GUC, they'd be much better off to be promoting electrical because much of their electrical power comes from renewable sources and, and nuclear and has a much lower carbon footprint. So they're kind of recommending a product that is worse than their other products in terms of carbon. And in addition, when they recommend installation of new fixtures, that's something that people are gonna have for a very long time. It means they're gonna be uh, having an increased carbon footprint for a very long time. So anyway, I wanted the, um, uh, the folks working on this project to look at that web page and to see that it's advocating increased use of, of natural gas, which is a very surprising position. Uh, and I wanted them to be aware of that because I, I think that position should change. I think they should stop doing that. Um, yeah, pertinent to the GUC um, situation, you know, we had hoped that one of their people would um, answer questions like that and um, address tonight's meeting. And I've made about 10 phone calls and I've been in touch with a person, Jacob Barnes, who's an engineer with GUC. And when I told him, and I was, um, uh, I would say mild and, and not confrontational with him. Um, and, but when he, when I said that, you know, we wanted them to address issues of incentives for renewable energy in, in the city of Greenville, he sort of backtracked a little bit and said he would need to talk to, the, I don't know, his supervisor or his boss man about whether he could address our committee. And um, I called him back again today and he, he hasn't returned the call. He indicated that they would make a presentation in March, but he needed to talk to somebody higher up. So 
Yeah. I think they're um, pretty cautious. I had a chat with uh, Rick Smiley about some of these issues. And uh, Rick said, well, you should go and present there. And so I had a look at, I'd actually already looked at their agendas and so on. They don't have a public comment period at GUC. So they, there isn't an obvious mechanism unless one gets an invitation, I guess. But I think really, um, rather than us talking to one of their engineers, we probably need to be explaining the issues to their board and their leadership. Um, so that there's a broader understanding um, of, of the changes that they could very easily make that would, I think, probably not hurt their, you know, profits or, you know, pseudo profits, whatever they call them, um, at all, and could be really positive. I think this needs to be brought to their attention. I'm, I'm, I'm actually astonished that these sorts of claims are appearing on a, you know, a public energy utilities website that are just so problematic. Well, I, I think we can start with it, having a representative that talk to us in the March meeting, and then we can determine if we can address their board and get more substantial input into our concerns about GUC's policies. Um, so I'm waiting on this person to get back with me and hopefully they will follow through and we'll have them on the agenda for March. Um, if you're talking to them about it, Bob, if they're reluctant to do that, you might just ask them if they would rather we simply come and, and talk to their board at one of their meetings. So yeah, maybe offer that as an alternative if they're dragging their feet. Because yeah, I actually yeah. think that's the best thing anyway. Right. Yeah, I agree. I, I think to get any action, we need to express ourselves to their board. Um, and um, Anyhow, I'll see what this guy says when he calls me back. All right, so, thank you. So, um, other old business. Um, uh, Jeff wrote a very nice letter to Mr. And um, I sent that letter on to um, Michael Carwin and also to Brian Meyerhofer, who's our liaison with the council. And in that letter, we asked that the city prioritize um, protected bike lanes, increase EV charging stations, and invest in stormwater management um, in terms of uh, using the federal money, which is the federal COVID grant to the city. Um, and Michael Corwin, you know, in our last meeting, that's what he suggests that we do is to send that letter to him. And um, then hopefully you'll follow up on that. I haven't had any response from either Mr. Meyerhofer or um, Mr. Corwin. Um, another issue from the last meeting, um, David uh, has written a really excellent letter, um, which um, I kind of let slip through the I was waiting on some of the other members of the EAC to um, see if they had any input into that letter. But basically, the letter is to the point, and it um, recommends that city council develop a green energy plan and that they um, recognize the need for a sustainability officer in order to carry through on the um, green energy plan and the recommendations which the Duke students will make to us regarding greenhouse gas emissions. Um, we'll receive that in April. Um, and also in this letter, which I'm gonna send to city council tomorrow, um, it mentions the issue of crypto mining and the huge energy consumption um, that that will entail and our concerns about that. Also from the 
January meeting, um, we had talked about getting a newspaper article about the greenhouse gas emissions inventory. And I got an email from Brock Letchworth, who I guess has something to do with city information office. And he wanted to get in touch with the two Duke students and learn more about what they're doing. Um, so I put him in touch with them. And I'm not sure if, um, if he's followed up on that, but hopefully we'll see some um, article in the paper about this in the near future. Um, and also, um, the green growth toolbox, um, as, as we decided in the last meeting, I sent a letter to Shante Gooby, who is, I guess, in charge of the city planning department. And in that letter, I recommended that the city planning department use the green Go growth toolbox in um, zoning decisions in the future. And Mr. Gooby um, sent an email back to me and he wants me to give them more details about the green growth toolbox, which I will do on um, February 15th at their next meeting. Um, so That's great. Yeah, the, you know, the, the green growth toolbox is basically um, a list of tools that planners should use to ensure that um, we don't lose species, that um, species viability is maintained when a city grows into a certain area. Um, and there, it's a it's a program by the state of North Carolina. It's very detailed and requires quite a bit of expertise. Um, so I'll present that and hopefully they'll at least use some of those tools and consider, um, um, you know, sustainability and um, not depleting species um, when they, um, grant a new neighborhood would be developed in the city of Greenville. Um, Bob. Yeah. Dallas, uh, going back a minute to what you were going to send, you're going to send something about the uh, Compute North pro thing to the city council. Is that right? Yeah. And, and I should have sent this long ago, but obviously they've made their decisions but at least we can express our opinion that it's going to increase greenhouse gas emissions. Well, I, I don't have that opinion because I don't know about it. And so uh, I would not like to be associated with the letter. Okay. As, as a member of the commission. I'll, I'll send it as the chairman of the commission. and um, I won't say that it's, universally um, approved by the other members. Okay. Um, what, and I'm certainly no expert in crypto mining, but um, my reading on it is it uses vast, hugely vast amounts of electricity. So GUC will be purchasing much, much more electricity from Duke Energy. And of course, electricity generation by Duke currently is primarily from fossil fuels, natural gas, and somewhat coal. Um, relatively little amount of electricity produced by Duke comes from renewable energy such as solar. So by greatly increasing electricity consumption um, it will greatly contribute to greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, that's kind of the point that David was making in the letter. 
um, that that this crypto mining um, will increase greenhouse gas emissions because of the electric electricity which it uses. So that's um, that's true. It will um, have a, a massive effect. But um, my understanding, you know, from my my limited reading, uh, and I'm interested to know if I've got this wrong of, of Duke's. You know, the, the sort of energy mix of what we get here is that I think it was something like 40% nuclear, 10% renewable, and the rest coal and natural gas. Does that sound right? That, that's approximately right. I've, yeah, very little, you know, like less than 10% of electricity comes from renewable. Right. Um, so uh, I'm gonna, and in this letter, David's wording is the council is currently looking at the issue of crypto mining as an allowed business in Greenville. The massive energy consumption of such enterprises will have a major impact on greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so that's the part of the letter. Um, concerning the crypto mining, and I agree with that statement. Um, so I'll sign it just as the chairman. Yeah, but I don't think that's, anyone's ever disputed that point. Like it, it, it will have that effect. It's just whether you think that's a problem or not, or that the benefits outweigh the costs. But I've never heard that at all disputed because the energy has right. to come from somewhere and it's just going to have that effect. David, I think you sent an email about this um, that when they had the public comment period, people talked about the noise factor from this crypto mining, but sounds like not much was um, discussed in terms of the huge increase in greenhouse gas emissions that will be related to it. Yeah, that was that was uh, very disappointing. Um, it just uh, the, 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 what was being uh, valued was noise and the income. This this was it. As far as um, uh, pollution, greenhouse gas emissions, sustainable energy, that was not at all. Uh, considered, and I, I thought it was just so um, disappointing after all we've done and talked about the need to, to move to sustainable energy and all that the council has done over the last six or seven years when this issue first came up, um, there still, there was no discussion of it. And on the contrary, you see things like, uh, Jeff, you mentioned with the contracting for natural gas uh, and other contracts like that, which commit the city to years. The natural gas contract was 30 years uh, of purchasing this gas and all the infrastructure that goes along with it. Once the city has entered into that um, mode, it's not going to give it up or retreat from it. So it kind of closes the door on the possibility of sustainable energy. So the whole thing is just uh, very disappointing. Hey, Dallas. Yeah. yeah. Did you go to Rotary Monday? No. Well, Smiley was supposed to speak and I was just wondering what I don't know uh, of any positives with this mining venture. Never heard any positives. Well, I've, I've talked to Rick about it, and his position is that um, the contract is such that GUC will net quite a lot of money and that that will benefit us by somehow, you know, indirectly lowering our rates or something like that. And then um, he says that there are taxes paid on the sale of the energy. And um, uh, I don't understand exactly how the taxes work, but I guess there's a state tax on energy sales. And uh, it may be the case 
it, um, and I'm just not sure. It may be the case that some of that comes to Greenville um, as a as a local tax, and so I, I think those are the benefits that, that 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 he would claim. I don't, in my opinion, they're not sufficient, but I think those are the benefits that have been claimed. And so I, I actually feel like you know if we're going to get this, and it, it seems to have been done, although it was a closer vote than I expected, so that made me. You know, more disappointed in some of our representatives, but it was four to two vote. But if we're going to get this, I'm thinking, well, that would be a, if they're going to and, and GUC is going to net all this money from this, you know, kind of problematic activity. Uh, that might be a great chance to allocate some resources to financial incentives for renewables. So this may be a pot of money that they can do something positive with. It'll, it'll. I, I can't imagine that in even over decades it could possibly compensate for the harm being done. But, it, but, um. But you know, better they could maybe make uh, have something positive come out of it. In the newspaper article about this, um, there's a um, sort of a Greenville development organization that promotes new industries in Greenville, and the representative of that organization said, well, this will promote Greenville as a place that is um, interested in um, high tech and, and um, it'll be a, a marketing plus for the city of Greenville. That, that's what he said about it. Um, if I, you know, one thing that if I were devil's advocate, you could say, well, if Greenville turns this down, maybe Rocky Mount will take it on. And if, if this is going to happen, somebody's going to use a ton of electricity and emit greenhouse gases. So, you know, if it's going to happen, why don't we do it in Greenville? That's probably the thinking of some people's part. But I personally think that the city of Greenville should stand up for, um, um, you know, environmental issues. And, and this certainly is not an environmentally friendly activity. Well, has the, the city made a decision on this thing already? I, I think what the city council voted on and somebody can correct me was that they will allow this to occur however um, there are certain restrictions they have to put it on i forget 130 acres of land and it has to be a certain diameter distance away from any residential neighborhood because of the noise issue so the the city council did um put some restrictions to protect residential people from this noise. Um, but basically they approved allowing this to, to occur if they follow those restrictions. What are you, uh, what are we expecting to do through this discussion that we're having? Since a decision made, not much other than to just let the city council. We're we're an advisory commission to the city council, and to um, let them know that we have some concerns about this. Um, you're right; they've made a decision, um, but I think sometimes it's worthwhile to for us to express an opinion about things. I wish we could have done it before their decision, but we didn't have a meeting before their decision. Bob, I've got to sign off. I've got a uh, conflict with a parish uh, subcommittee. That's your subcommittee. Thank you for uh, being part of the meeting as long as you could. Um, under old business, um, 
letter B is environmental web page, but I think from Ann and maybe Jeff, um, they're asking Daryl to contact somebody who's an expert in that. Is that right, Daryl? Uh, I'm sorry, I said that again. Um, Ann Maxwell sent an email about environmental web page and there's somebody, I think from the city who does that or has expertise in that. And in that email, she suggested that Daryl contact this person to make a presentation in March. Okay, that, that's where my confusion was. Yeah, that's a, that's a city staff person that works in the uh, city manager's office uh, doing the, the social media accounts. Um, and so I talked, with, I talked with her and she could not uh, come to this meeting, but she will be at uh, the March uh, meeting to talk with the committee about um, public information uh, for boards and commissions. Great. So we'll uh, learn about that in March. Um, new business. Um, the first is EAC presentation to city council. And I think from communication I've had from you, Daryl, we don't have a date for that or they haven't established um, that. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, the the when I talked with the clerk's office about it, um, they were postponing that and they did not yet have a date on when they would resume boards and commissions presentations. And when they figure that out, then they'll establish a calendar on which boards and commissions present when. Um, I think it's all being postponed because they're uh, they're having to go to virtual meetings and for COVID and all that kind of stuff. So they're trying to limit the agendas as much as possible. Um, well, whenever that occurs, um, and I'd like input from other EAC members on this, my personal goals for EAC for 2022, number one is that the city uh, establish a sustainability office and hire a sustainability officer who can follow up on the um, greenhouse gas inventory and the recommendations that the Duke students will be making in April. Um, I think it's beyond the level of expertise and time for members of the EAC to to um, follow up on that. And, you know, the Duke students will making, make, a measure, make measurements of greenhouse gases um, that are emitted by the city. And they'll make recommendations about low hanging fruit where we can um, reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But I think it's really gonna take a sustainability officer to um, implement those changes. I recently um, saw a web presentation, actually it was a, on PBS um, from the city of Asheville, which has a sustainability office manager. And it's incredible the things that the city of Asheville is doing um, in terms of um, the environment and climate change. And I really think that um, if, if we're gonna ever have any teeth in any of these things, we need a um, hired person um, to affect this. And so that, that would be one major goal I will, would like to present to the city council. Bob, I just wanna note that uh, uh, I think you're, Entirely right about that. So we really need an, uh, a, a spokesperson, a kind of a, an internal, I don't know if advocate's the right word, but somebody to provide the perspective of um, uh, 
you know, of expertise in environmental issues on the various topics that come up in the city. And, and I would hope that would apply to, you know, GUC as well as a sort of a branch of, of city government in one sense. And so, um, you know, these, these amazing um, statements they have on their webpage, I, I have to think that, you know, no one's really reviewed those properly, who knows much about these issues. And I would hope that kind of thing would be caught by a sustainability officer. Um, and so just avoiding those kinds of embarrassing errors, uh, you know, that would be a, 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 a terrific contribution. Yeah, I yeah. agree. And, and I, I think, think uh, go ahead, David. I think another thing, Jeff, is that when we uh, get wind of a, uh, an issue and try to intervene, we're way too late. Decision has been made. People have set their minds up, made agreements and whatnot, and we come in at the tail end of this thing. And um, well, like I said, we're just too late. So we need somebody who's part of the system um, and can see what's coming down the tracks long yeah. before most other people can. And uh, that's their business. Um, but there you are. Yeah. Yeah, the, um, you know, when I went to the department managers, um, along with the Duke students in early January, I, I learned the city has a person who um, is in, in charge of trees in the city of Greenville, uh, the canopy level of the city of Greenville. Um, and, um, you know, if, that's certainly a, a important part of the environment. And um, so I think if we can have somebody who's in charge of canopy and trees, we could have a sustainability manager. Um, but um, so I think that's something we need to really stress whenever we make a presentation to the council. Another goal is I think the, the city should um, put environmental issues and sustainability um, more on its uh, forefront. And that would include uh, a, a large part on the Greenville City website about what this city does to um, promote environmental friendly actions. Um, and hopefully we'll get a newspaper article out soon those are kind of the two main goals that I would have for 2022. There's a lot of other things. Does anybody else have anything else to add to this that um, whenever we make this presentation, we can put into it? Yeah, I feel very strongly that Greenville Utilities commissions should stop promoting the um, increased use of fossil fuels, like let alone you know reducing things, just not promoting using more. Uh, so I, I think that because that's that should be achievable. That's not you know they can sell electricity instead of gas. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, one thing Bob was talking about the the tree cover canopy cover. The Sierra Club um, public lecture on the um, next Monday, or is it the 11th, is going to be on, on exactly that uh, uh, tree canopy and how does Greenville stack up to the rest of the state? Oh, good, yeah. Um, send me again the link to that. I guess it's a Zoom meeting. Um, yeah, like yeah. Um, February 14th, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, tree can, you know, trees, of course, absorb CO2, but they also reduce the temperature of cities. So there's a lot of value in canopy um, of trees. So, um, yeah, and, and so in terms of goals, the sustainability office, 
officer or website. Um, GUC being more um, friendly to renewable energy of the individuals in Greenville and stop promoting fossil fuels. Um, so those are some things. And if you think of anything else, we ought to really put in court in front of the council. Um, um, I think we ought to make an effort to promote electric vehicles. Uh -huh. Free charging stations, free parking. I mean, that's, I think that would make Greenville look pretty good if we had a lot of electric vehicles. Yeah, I agree. Um, and that's something that if GUC gets a pot of money from this um, crypto mining, you know, they could put in more charging stations. So, um, yeah, that, that's a good point, Tom. Um, we've already sort of done the crypto discussion. Uh, Anne wasn't able to be here, but we've kind of thrown that around. Um, is, uh, is there any other issues for this meeting? Um, People would like to bring up the proposed agenda for March 3rd. Um, hopefully we'll have a little data from the School of Environment. Um, we'll have a GUC representative and we'll have um, somebody with expertise on web site um, planning. Anything else uh, on anybody's mind? No. That sounds good, Bob. I'm ready to adjourn. Okay. Do I have a motion we adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Vote on this, Rachel. Or... Robert Shaw. Aye. David Ames. Aye. Thomas Trevathan. Aye. Jeff McKinnon. Aye. Good. Thank you all for uh, your input and your hard work on this. And uh, thanks, Bob. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thank you. Bye. Cheers.